So the square that I just created is a decent enough function, but it really is a fairly limited function. It's a fairly limited block because it can only draw squares of size 100. And while that may be okay for one program, it may not actually be something that I want overall. I, I want, might want more flexibility. I mean, think about this for a second. When the creators of Scratch created the motion blocks, when they created this very top block, move 10 steps, right? they didn't create a block called move that when you invoked it, always moved 10 steps. I mean, if they did, that would be fairly limiting. Uh, you mean, if, if I wanted to move 10 steps, that's fine, but if I want to move 100 steps, I'd need to use 10 of those, or I'd need to use a loop. If I wanted to move 200 steps, I'd need to use a loop to, to do that 20 times. But if I wanted to move 5 steps, I can't do it, because there's no way to, to, to call a move 10 steps and do less than that. Or, or worse, if I wanted to move 1 step to, to make my half circle. Right? And so the creators of Scratch have the ability to put what we call in computer science a parameter in here that says, hey, move some number of steps and move whatever I type in this block. Well, we might want to have the same ability when we create our blocks. I want to create a, a, a block or a function called square, but I don't want square to automatically move 100 steps. I want it to move some number of steps that's defined by the programmer. So the programmer can use that block to, move, to make a square of size 100 one time, and a square of size 50 another time, and a square of size 200 uh, even an, another time. And so we want to be able to create that. And that is absolutely possible with Scratch. Uh, it, it's something that you just have to kind of look carefully at. So let's do this right now. I'm going to create more blocks. And I'm going to say make a block. And I'm going to start by typing in square in here. But I'm not going to hit OK yet. I don't want to quit right now. Uh, I want to add in additional information to this line. And so you may have not noticed before this options tab right here, or this options feature underneath this. I'm going to click the arrow and change it from to a drop arrow, arrow. And you now see that there are actually multiple pieces that you can build into your block into the, and design the way your block works. So I want to start with the label square, but then I want to have a number input field that allows me to describe how long this, uh, this square, the size of the sides of the square. So I'm going to click on that. And when I click on the add number input, you'll see that I get a number uh, field here that currently says number one in there. And it turns out that that label in there is going to be in essence, your variable name. Again, it's technically a parameter. But that's the name that you're going to use as the programmer in your code in other places. And so number one is a pretty cruddy name for this. Uh, I might want to call this length. Uh, that's a better variable name. I realize with the current screen resolution, that's not uh, easily viewable. But I put the, the word length in there. And, and I want to add a little bit more to this block. So just like you know, with motion, it said move 10 steps. I want this to say square um, some number um, size. And so I'm going to add a little bit more to this. I'm going to add another, another piece of label text. And so when I click on this button right here, it adds more text after, after this. And so I'm going to say size. Uh, this isn't the most grammatically correct uh, block, but it works. So I'm going to say OK. And you'll see that what I get here now over in my blocks menu is a block that says square one size. Right? And I could have written it as square of size one or whatever you know, grammatically you like. But, but I get this ability to now cr define what that means. And you'll see what's different about this purple block is that in addition to having, you know, here it said define square, here it says define square, but there's also this length, kind of dark blue length uh, circle here. And what you might not notice intuitively until somebody shows it to you is I can actually grab that and pull it out and use that in code. And when I do it, it fills back in again. So let me think about what this is. I want to create a square. right? And a square, of course, is four sides. So I'm going to drag out my four sides here. I'm going to say move forward four, or, or sorry, four times do this. I want you to move forward some number of steps and turn 90 degrees. 
Now, in previous versions, I typed the word 100 in here, but I don't want to use the word 100. I want to use whatever the, the, the user of my block gives me. So I'm going to drag out this length parameter, and I'm going to drop it inside of that circle, just like I would with a variable peg in earlier components of the course. And so this says whenever anybody uses this block, they're going to give me a number, and I want you to use that number for the number of sides. And so now instead of drawing a normal square here, what I might do is to say, hey, when I'm done, I want you to make a square of size 100. But then when you're done with that, I want you to make a square of size 75. And then when you're done with that, I want you to make a square of size 50, right? And so I can, I can call this same function over and over again. Let me make the stage a little bigger so we can see what this looks like. So we're going to draw out the, the, the two half circles for my B, and then I'm going to make three squares, right? One right after the other. I made a square of size 100, and then I made a square of size 75, and then I made a square of size 50, all by invoking this block right here over and over again and giving it a different parameter each time that I created that. There are other things that you can do. Uh, we're not going to create a block automatically right now, but if you look at these other options, so the, the top one is numerical input. That's truthfully probably the, one of the most common ones that I've used both with students and on my own. Um, the label text is just this, you know, this stuff on the side. So here square and size were label text. But you also can add an input, a parameter for string for text that you might use in like a say bubble, if you had a, a function that had your character saying something as part of its, its block. And you also can put in Boolean inputs. And so you can play with these. You can play with how uh, these work as you go on. But there's, this is really a very robust feature that allows you to create multiple blocks that don't exist in the language by default but are something that you want to use over and over again so you can create those blocks.